Hello everyone, Daniel Hubach here, www.firelessforge.shop. So today I'm continuing work on my uncle's broadsword. He ordered a uh, wooden sword from me inspired by his family crest, which I have right here. This here is his family crest, and you can see that the animal on top of the helm there is a goose covered in blood because, you know, geese are always covered in blood. But anyway, so I'm making a great... Uh, big sword for him. I don't know how else to describe it. The thing's gigantic. I've got the stave for it sitting around here. Somewhere. Ah, there it is. So this sword right here is about 58 inches long. Show it to you real quick here. This is the uh, handle hilt. The blade comes all the way, all the way down here. Can't even get the whole thing in the camera, but it's about 58 inches long. Um, it's got a half moon pommel on it. And the really awesome part, though, is going to be the cross guard. And the cross guard is inspired by the family animal in the form of a goose. Um, and I've been working on these for the past couple weeks. Uh, it took me about 10 hours, I think, to do them all as far as I've gotten to right here. And today I'm going to be finishing up the detailing on them. Uh, I just have to cut out a void right in here because I'm going to be wood burning his family crest. So that's the part that has the uh, helmet in it right here. I'm going to be wood burning that onto the sword blade um, and we're going to be able to see it through the void in the cross guard, which is going to be like a frame around it. And so that's going to be pretty darn sweet, and I'm really looking forward to getting that project done uh, and seeing how it will look in the end. By the way, in case anybody's interested, this part right here, the guard, is going to be made out of, uh, well, is made out of black ash, and the sword itself is being made out of white birch. So today we're going to go ahead and try to get this cro these cross guard pieces finished up. Here goes. It's built. So here we are at the drill press, and we are going to start uh, cutting out this void in here at the drill press because what needs to happen is we need to go ahead and punch some holes through this area, or all these little dots that I have marked here, and then we are going to use a very small saw, a little hand saw called a, uh, a, a copping saw, and we're going to um, remove this block of material. Alright, we have successfully drilled all the holes in both pieces, and now it is time to uh, go ahead and start to cut this out using, considered using the scroll saw on it, but I think that that's just going to be a little bit too rough, so we're going to go ahead and do it by hand using a copping saw. Alrighty, so we're getting ready to start cutting out uh, this box, or this, uh, this shield-shaped area right here. And we're going to be using a copping saw for this, and that's a saw with a very small blade with very fine teeth on it, um, and it has a large box frame to it, also known as a box saw, as a matter of fact. And we're going to be using this to cut out the area inside of here, and we have uh, a shirt, an old t-shirt tied around the wing there to protect the um, wood from the clamp jaws. And of course, you might be wondering how I'm going to get in here with my saw. Well, what I've actually got to do is I have to disengage the saw blade. I have to take the saw blade out, run it through these holes, and then reattach it to... All right, with the blade reattached and the handle nice and tight, we're going to go ahead and saw this out. I'm not going to try to be exact with it. I'm going to come back later with my Dremel tool, and I'm going to get all my lines to be exact.
we go. And that felt like almost a surgical process right there, getting that out. I'll tell you, my heart was beating pretty good because uh, I don't want to see that break. There are many, many hours, close to 10 hours now into this project. Um, but we're going to do the same thing now with the other one. And then we're going to move on to cutting out or to uh, refining these edges here using the Dremel tool. Okay, so we have both of them all cut out now. Now we're going to uh, start taking down the uh, wood a little bit. As you can see, I've got a dual ridge going on right here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is smooth that out so that it's all uh, on one level. Right, with the main shape or with the uh, the smoothing out here gives me kind of a layout to work with now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and refine my pencil lines again all right so after some good work with the barrel sander I got most of this already smoothed out and detailed uh, you can see there's a couple spots right in the near edges here where I'm having a little bit of trouble getting in there. I'm wary to put this in a clamp and try to do it with a file, so I might have to hand sand that down, which will take quite a while. Oh, that was poetry. I didn't intentionally do that. <laughs> um, but uh, now what I'm going to try to do, I think, is take this guy right here, this is a sanding pad, and see if I can't get some more of that to come out there. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to go in there by hand with sandpaper and work that out of there very carefully. Alright, I think what I've got here is as far as I can get with it with power tools. Uh, so now we have to use some sandpaper and go in there by hand and do some more work on that. This here is 100 grit, or I'm sorry, what's this one? 60 grit. This is 60 grit sandpaper, which you use for uh, removing bulk material. It's gonna be kind of tricky to get in here and do this. But we'll Alrighty, so lots of success so far. We have not broken anything. I have both of them all cut out and sanded down using a combination of the Dremel tool and uh, just hand sanding going all the way up to 220 grit, which I think is as smooth as I need to get this for the uh, purpose of this project. So now the next step is gonna be to paint the edges here black with some black Mott outdoor paint and then we want to get some, I don't have any natural stain right now, but I'll have to buy some. And I'm going to put natural stain on these wings, or perhaps Malin's friction polish, we'll see here. Um, so that we can get that uh, nice and buffed up and uh, looking finished. Now the next step here, I think, before we add any paint or anything, of course, is going to be to get the uh, wood dust off of it. So I'm going to get the compressor going so that I can... Uh, blow the dust off of those rather than use a wax um, rather than using tack cloth which has wax on it because I don't want to get wax residue on here I'd rather just blow it off with the air okay so I got everything blown off with the compressor and I got my board back here cleaned off as well uh, it's important to do that if you're going to sand or if you're going to start the um, painting or staining or finishing process, whatever it is, make sure that not only your item is cleaned off, but also whatever you're putting it against. So I've got some flat black outdoor paint here that I'm going to go ahead and do the bar of the wings and I'm going to do the top and the bottom with.
Alrighty, so we've gone as far as we're going to go today with the cross guard for the sword. I got the paint job on there. I got about two coats of paint uh, total. Um, the things to be done now is, well, to let it set until tomorrow for sure. And then I have some Malin's High Build Friction Polish here. And I'm going to go over the wings and the head with that. Um, and then I'm going to buff that into it using a, uh, a cotton buffing wheel. Um, and then we'll get that polished in there. And I'm excited to see what that will look like as a finished product. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in to this blog post today. This is just an example of some of the work that we do. Uh, this sword is a custom order, and we take custom orders from all over the world. Whatever design you're looking for, whatever theme you've got going, maybe you, like my uncle, want to do something based on your family crest. All you got to do is look up your family crest um, on, online, and you can usually trace that, um, or you can at least trace a relative's. I don't know the specifics of it, but what I do know is woodworking, and if you want to have an item similar to this made, you can definitely contact us at www.firelessforge.shop, or you can find us on Etsy. Again, same shop name, Fireless Forge. All right, everybody, take care of yourselves, and stay tuned for further blog posts coming up here in the next couple of days. Take care.